Hi everybody, Pastor Trevor here. Today we're continuing our series on making Jesus king. And today we're talking about making Jesus king of our bodies. When we say yes to Jesus, we give all of who we are to him, and this includes our bodies, and we're going to talk about what that looks like, because we want to live in full surrender to Jesus as our king. And when we do that, life is so much better. So here we go. We're talking about making Jesus king of our bodies. Now, what does the Bible say about our bodies? First of all, I want to share King David's revelation in Psalm 139, one of the most beautiful psalms. It says, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. So we know from scripture that God, he created, he's there in the process of creating who we are. He was there in the beginning. He breathed, he sculpted Adam and breathed into him. Our bodies, first of all, I want to say our bodies are not evil. Sometimes people get... Um, confused between like our body itself and flesh, God made our body and our body is a beautiful thing. And in the end, we're still going to have a body. It's going to be a better body than what we have now, but we're always going to have a body. Always. You know, um, just how Jesus, he has a body now, we're going to have a body too and it's going to be glorified. Our bodies, again, are not evil. Now, the enemy, he wants us to use our bodies to bring death, create harm, introduce disease, and cause trauma for generations. Before we're saved, our body is an instrument of death. Um, our body is beautiful and created by God, but again, the enemy uses it for evil. And it's been this way from the beginning with Adam and Eve, um, you know, taking the fruit, Cain killing Abel, um, all of those things. Now, pl our uh, pleasure and our senses were created by God. Now, I want to say that the enemy does not create. The enemy can only twist the beautiful things that God has created. And often this happens with our bodies. So now that we are submitted in to Jesus and belong to him, what does he want us to do with our bodies? After all, our bodies belong to him now. 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20 says this, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Now the question is, how do we glorify God with our body? So there are a few different ways. And I just want to give a quick disclaimer before uh, before I keep going. I'm going to be talking briefly about the S word. So if you're listening with the three-letter S word, if you're listening with kids, this is your warning to pause and listen later. Be warned. So first of all, when we say yes to Jesus, it is expected that we save sex or marriage. It is beautiful and holy, and as followers of Christ, we're expected to save this special gift for the marriage bed. Outside the marriage covenant, it is destructive and a tool for the enemy. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things, excuse me, all things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both and one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that when he, is joined to a pros he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. So it's really important that we understand that we are temples of the Holy Spirit. If we call ourselves believers in Jesus, if we're disciples, we should not be, uh, we should not be having sexual intimacy with anybody except our own spouses. When we do that, we're introducing. Um, we're, it, the Bible says that we become one with the people that we. Um, that we have intercourse with. So if we're doing that, we are exposing, our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells inside of us. So when we're doing these things, we're sinning against our temple. Our body is meant to be a temple of the Holy Spirit. And we're in, we become one with that person. And we're introducing things, not just into our body, but our spirit that should not be there. The Holy Spirit is jealous and he doesn't want to share his temple with anybody or anybody else's stuff. So it's not just a physical dynamic that's happening, but it's a very spiritual dynamic. And we need to make sure that we flee from it. Just as Paul says here, that we flee from that. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 
3 through 5 says, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. So it's really, really important that we abstain from sexual immorality. I'm going to say again, super important. Again, God made it, and we, he said, you know, be fruitful and multiply to Adam and Eve. Um, sex is a very special thing between a husband and a wife. It is a covenant. And inside that covenant, it is beautiful. And um, it brings God so much glory. But outside of it, the enemy twists it. Uh, through it, he brings disease and harm, trauma, and all these things. And for believers, we should not we should not have sex outside of marriage at all. Before, after, uh, before or after with other people, one spouse forever in that covenant. So very, very important that we that we listen to Jesus, listen to the word on this. All right, and then we're going to talk about we glorify God by being sober. So Proverbs 21 says, Wine is a mocker, strong drink a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. 1 Corinthians 6.10 says, For thieves, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Peter 5.8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your, the, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And so I want to say that it's important that we as believers are sober-minded. Now, the Bible does not have a prohibition against drinking, but it does, it's very clear that drunkenness is not for the child of God. Because when we are drunk, we are, first of all, we're be living in excess. And second of all, our mind gets completely taken over. We're not in control of our mind. And if there's anything that we're supposed to have is self-control, a fruit of the Spirit is self-control. When we allow our mind to be altered, and this includes drugs too, um, although I'm staying completely from drugs. Make sure you don't do them at all. Because all of these things, they can distort our mind and the way we perceive reality. And when, um, when our mind is hijacked, be it by drunkenness or participating in drugs or anything like that, we are allowing the enemy to influence our lives and our guard is down. It's very important that we are sober-minded. So again, there's not a prohibition against drinking in the Bible, but being drunk and using any kind of a uh, drug for a uh, drug because it, it alters it alters your mind and it keeps you not only is it harmful for your body um but it's like i said before it's opening an avenue for the enemy to affect you and you're not living in self-control uh and we also glorify god by abstaining from gluttony this is one of the big things that one of the big sins that nobody talks about um proverbs 23 20 through 21 says be not among drunkards or among glutton, gluttonous eaters of meat, for the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty, and slumber will clothe them with rags. 1 Corinthians 6.12 says, I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. So again, food should not master us either. Um, food is wonderful. God made such, a, like, it's crazy to think that God made things like berries and herbs and all these flavorful things and god wants us to enjoy those things but he does not want us to live in gluttony and overeat um that's not self-control again he wants us to be sober-minded which goes back to what i talked about earlier uh he wants us to be sober-minded and he wants us to have self-control and when we eat too much we are we're harming our bodies when we're overeating we want to make sure that we are not participating in gluttony in any way and we want to make sure that when we eat, our food is ultimately meant to fuel us. Yes, food is pleasurable, and God wants us to enjoy the pleasure of eating. But if we are eating in excess and filling our bodies with destructive things, we're making our bellies our God and destroying the temple of the Holy Spirit. Remember, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, and we want to make sure that we are fueling it with good things. So fitness issues and bodily issues should not keep us from our call. Um, if the things we're eating are keeping us slow, um, making us slothful, or they have dominion over us in any way, it's keeping you from living the full life that God has meant for you. You know, we talk about there are people that have been taken out early from having heart attacks. Like, I believe it was Jack Coe who ate, he had a really bad diet, and he died at like 54, amazing man of God. But he got taken out way too early because he was uh, eating things like fried, you know, 
fried big fried chicken meals at like three in the morning after services and just not taking care of his body. We need to take care of our bodies to, feel, to fulfill the call that God has for us. And I want to also say that we glorify God by obeying his specific demands for our personal lives. So God might say something to you to tell you to abstain from something. Um, and it might not be in the Bible. And it might be something that's okay for everybody else. Uh, we even see this with Nazarite vows in the Bible where God says, hey, I don't want you to participate in this. Um, I don't want you to touch this. And God might have that for you specifically. He might tell you to abstain from sugar. He might tell you not to get a tattoo. Um, like, again, those things aren't bad in and of themselves, but he might have something that he does not want you to participate in. And he may or may not tell you the reason why, but it's important that we're obedient because God knows exactly what we need. He might tell you, you know, uh, not to eat meat or only to eat a certain kind of food. Um, whatever God tells you, it's important that we obey it because he knows best, right? We got to remember that God is a good father and he wants what's best for us. And we don't always know what's best for ourselves. So when the Holy Spirit tells you something like, hey, you shouldn't eat that or you shouldn't, you shouldn't drink this or you shouldn't do that. There's a reason why. And we need to heed, um, heed what he's saying and listen to it and obey it. And number four, my favorite one, is we get to glorify God by doing the works of Jesus. I'm excited to talk about this because I didn't want this to just be a big list of things not to do. That wasn't the goal here. Um, but we get to talk about what we get to do. All right. Remember, like I talked about, our bodies in and of themselves are not evil. So when we're saved, we get to use our body for good things. Right. So we are a temple of the Holy Spirit. It's important that we are not mastered by anything in regards to our body. And when we take away those things that are mastering us, we're removing idols from our lives. And we're able to commune with God. Most importantly, we're able to commune with God without any hindrance. Like, think about it. If your body is a temple and you're doing things to sin against the Lord with things that are hurting your temple, God doesn't want to share a temple with any idols, right? He's living inside of you. The Holy Spirit doesn't want to see like an idol, like... What's this guy doing in here, right? We want to be completely clean so that we can commune with God um, without any kind of hindrance um, and bring glory to the name of Christ, right? So Jesus went about doing good. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. Uh, he fulfilled God's will for his life. He did not pursue the gratification of the flesh. Um, that doesn't mean he didn't enjoy, you know, eating or, you know, uh, eating and stuff that, that he still enjoyed life but he did not live to gratify the desires of the body his um his desire was to bring about to show people what god was like to um to love people and to show people the goodness of god he used his body to bless others so i want to say that we get to use our body in a many different ways to glorify God through hugging, through praying on people and laying on of hands, through serving, through working, creating beautiful art, enjoying intimacy with your spouse, speaking encouraging words. All of these are ways that we get to use our body in the kingdom. Now we are the body of Christ on earth, right? I'm going to say that again. We are the body of Christ on earth. There's actually, um, I think it's a, a Catholic hymn and it goes like, it says, um, Christ has no body now, but yours. And obviously, you know, he's in heaven, but saying on earth, we are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. And the Bible says that God dwelt among us. Um, and that word that when it talks about how Jesus dwelt among us, that word is tabernacle, that Jesus tabernacled among us. And I want to say that you are the tabernacle of the Holy Spirit. You are a moving temple of the Holy Spirit, just how Jesus had the Holy Spirit living inside of him. We are the revelation of God to people. We bring them to the Father, right? Just in the same way that Jesus did. We are Jesus dwelling among humanity. So our tabernacle or our temple needs to be clean to fully express the goodness of God in our lives. When we sin against our body, we are living. When we sin against our body, we are inviting uncleanness into the temple of the Lord. I want to let you know that you are valuable. I'm going to say it again. You are valuable. Do not desecrate your temple. You're too good for that. Don't desecrate your temple. It is for the Holy Spirit alone. Your temple is for him. And I want to encourage you to use your temple to bring God glory everywhere you go. 
Our bodies are not our own. They belong to the Lord. So I want to encourage you with that as you make Jesus king. Ask him this week, is there anything in my life where I'm not glorifying you with my body, Lord? And ask the Holy Spirit to show you, and he will. And I just want to encourage you with that this week. Have a wonderful rest of your day.